C A yeah. L I F O R N I A California We said farewell to Death Valley and drove west to find the world's oldest trees. Tucked up at higher altitude live a grove of ancient bristlecone pine trees, one of which is over 5,000 years old. Hi, it's Molly. And we are in the bristlecone forest uh, to see some ancient bristlecones. We first visited the visitor center and learned about dating trees known as dendrochronology. We watched a video and tried our hand at matching tree rings to provide an estimated age. Um, this is a ancient, ancient bristle cone pine tree, uh -huh. 5,000 years old. You have to take the special like twist knob, stick it into any tree and twist it. And then you can bring it back to the sample place to try and line up like, okay, so this ring has to go here. And so you have to try and line it up. And then that's how you know like how old the tree is. One of the trees in this little area was the first 4,000 year old tree to be discovered. Since then there have been other older trees discovered, but the very first is in the groove somewhere. We made a quick overnight stop in the ski town of Mammoth Lakes, which was very smoky due to the record number of wildfires burning in California's national forests. Our drive into Yosemite was very scenic, but still smoky, so we missed some of the world's famous views. We found a great picnic spot along the quiet Yosemite River where we played on the boulders for lunch. We picked up junior ranger books and some good advice before heading to our campsite for the night. In the tent, we watched the rock climbing documentary Free Solo and were so impressed. When we stood in front of the world famous El Capitan the next day, it made the accomplishment of climbing it without ropes even more amazing. There were climbers on the face of El Capitan and a park ranger told us what it's like to climb. We were disappointed that Sequoia National Park was closed due to fire and we just had to experience these giants firsthand. We couldn't pass up a hike into a valley to see an ancient grove of sequoia trees. The trees we saw were huge. We stood in the tunnel and couldn't believe how large it was. I am in one of the world's largest sequoia trees in Yosemite National Park. Right here, there, it looks to be like some marble, but it's like hardened sap. So cool. It would be nice to come back again when the air is clear so that we can really appreciate the valley and the view. Our truck was making some strange noises so dad took it to the mechanic and we learned that we needed new brakes. And a new suspension spring. It was going to take almost a week to get all of the parts so we decided to rent a truck to carry all of our camping gear to our next campsite. But first we stopped at the Jelly Belly factory. It was a huge place with so many awesome things made out of jelly beans, including portraits of famous people. We received hats and a package of assorted jelly beans. We learned a lot about what we were seeing below in the factory. My favorite spot was seeing where the jelly beans get their final shiny coat. It's a huge drum, like the back of a cement truck that tumbles the beans around and around 
while workers add the right amount of color and coating. After the tour, we went to the cafeteria and ate jelly bean shaped food. Mum got some packages of beans for us to try at the gift shop. We took a scenic and hilly drive to Point Reyes National Seashore, where we got to play in the Pacific for the first time in a year. The air was warm, but the water was cold. It's a very pretty place to visit. We saw some brown pelicans and turkey vultures flying along the cliffs. The lighthouse at the end of the point was cool to see, but had over 300 stairs to reach. After a couple days of camping, we made the short drive to San Francisco, where we rented a house and stayed five nights. We took a tour bus ride and learned many facts about the city. We were impressed with the city's fun and chill vibe. Traffic was quiet and streets were clean. We stopped to see the painted ladies' houses and to walk the Presidio district. It was amazing to take in the Golden Gate Bridge from the open top of the tour bus. stop was to visit the Yoda statue outside Lucasfilm's headquarters and to walk up and down the steepest street in the city. Our feet were sore and we were tired, but we were happy to have seen most of the city's main sites. A couple of days later, we ventured back into the city center to visit the Exploratorium. This place was awesome. Absolutely every exhibit required you to touch something or manipulate something. Where the sand cables and playing with the exhibits about human behavior, magnetism, forces, and bubbles, and even optical illusions. We ran out of time to see everything and really want to go back again someday. We left San Francisco with the plan of driving Highway 1 all the way to LA so that we could marvel at the Golden Coast. But first, we stopped in Cupertino to see Apple HQ. Even the visitor center was sleek and built to look like their products. Mom loved seeing the ocean along Highway 1. She kept saying, look right, every time we turned another corner. Dad had to drive slowly because of all the twists and turns in the road. Sometimes we were high up a cliff and sometimes we were right near the sandy beaches. We had our picnic lunch on a beach so we could play in the water. Just before we reached our campsite, we stopped to see a huge colony of elephant seals. There were hundreds of them on the beach. We learned from a friendly conservation volunteer that these seals were mostly juvenile seals and that the adults had left just the week before to go hunt for food up by Alaska. It was so neat to see them so close. Our campsite was on the beach near the town of Morro Bay. We set up our tent and immediately hit the beach as the sun was setting. When we camped at Morro Bay, we were directly on the beach. Our campsite was literally made out of sand. And we liked playing in the water, and there were so many sand dollars. Every two or three feet, there would be a nice sand dollar. 
The next day, we explored the town and found a group of sea otters laying and floating off the shore. We watched them closely through binoculars. They are so cute. It's cold in there. I went up to here and nobody else has gone like past like the height. It's cold. I got it. From Morro Bay, we continued south along the coast until we reached the house we had rented in Burbank. The city of LA was huge. Dad took us for a drive through the Hollywood Hills and we saw some impressive mansions. We checked out the Hollywood sign, then we wound down the mountain and back up the Griffith Observatory. The views from the observatory were awesome and we could see all the way to the ocean. We walked to the sunset and ate a picnic dinner. Our next outing was to visit the California Science Center. We started out with a special Lego exhibit called The Art of the Brick. The artist had recreated famous artwork like the Mona Lisa using Lego. Everyone's favorite part of the exhibit were the near life like creations of animals. I think his gorilla needed over 10,000 pieces of Lego. After Lego, we toured the space exhibits and were able to see the Space Shuttle Endeavor. This was a special thing for Dad who had grown up learning about Endeavor and wanted to become an astronaut. We had lunch and then saw an IMAX movie about life under the sea. In the area of habitats, we learned about the desert and saw live animals like fennec fox. The aquarium and kelp forest was really fun to see because there were many different types of fish and eels and sharks. We sat and watched the tank for a while. We ran out of time to see everything before the building closed but had a great day. We drove down to Hollywood Boulevard to look at the Walk of Stars. It was a super touristy thing to do, but was more fun than we expected. At the Hollywood Walk of Fame, we saw stars for Michael Jackson, Eddie Murphy, Mike Myers. We saw Michael Jackson's hand and feet imprints in front of the Chinese theater and tried some moonwalks in his honor. Next, we drove through Beverly Hills and along Rodeo Drive to have a peek at the ridiculously expensive stores. Then we had a picnic dinner at the Santa Monica Pier and explored it by night. We left LA and drove east to Joshua Tree National Park, our final national park. We stopped at the visitor center and learned a bit about the Joshua Tree and how its seeds used to be spread around by giant ground sloths. It also grows slowly, so many of the tall trees are very old. We made our way to our campground and set up camp. We learned from our junior ranger books that there are two ecosystems in the park. We were camping in the Colorado Desert, which is lower in altitude and hotter than the Mojave Desert. It was quite warm setting up camp and cooled off a lot at night. Then we stopped at Skull Rock and climbed the boulders close by. Next, we drove a minor road through many Joshua trees and stopped at a hiking trail that took us to an abandoned homestead. It was hot, even in October. Absolutely everything growing had spikes. It was like every plant wanted to hurt you. The next day, we drove north to the Mojave Desert to see the Choya Garden and walked among the very pokey teddy bear-like Choya plants. We saw a beetle that is famous because when it's scared, it stands on its head and farts to scare away predators. Last but not least, we camped three nights in San Diego at another KOA. This time we were prepared for the Halloween activities. The campground hosted a costume parade and contest, which was a lot of fun. Then we got to go trick-or-treating around the campground. 
afterwards, there was a glow-in-the-dark dance party. We were so glad that we got to celebrate Halloween because we thought that we'd miss it this year. On our last full day in California, we went to the San Diego Zoo. What an awesome place. Right away, we saw so many amazing animals, all of our favorites. Koalas, a beautiful cheetah, and fennec foxes. It rained the day we visited the San Diego Zoo, but that didn't stop us from seeing a bunch of animals from all around the world. Some of my favorite animals were the fennec foxes, koalas, African penguins, and the cheetah. We are at the San Diego Zoo in front of, as you can see, some adorable pink flamingos. We saw African penguins, some lemurs, and a huge hippo. We saw bears, including a polar bear, elephants and giraffes, and many types of apes and monkeys. Since this was our last stop before Mexico, we spent one day running errands and found an awesome used bookstore where we stocked up on English books. The next morning, we packed up and headed into Mexico. Stay tuned for more on that adventure. I really liked all the spiky plants in Joshua Tree National Park. I really liked driving over the Golden Gate Bridge on the open-topped tour bus. I liked driving in LA. I know the traffic's supposed to be terrible, but it wasn't. And I loved driving on Santa Monica Boulevard and uh, through Hollywood Hills and all these other places you've seen. I saw lots of unique animals at the San Diego Zoo. I had so much fun learning how jelly bellies were made at the Jelly Belly Factory. 